Hey everybody, welcome back to Shock and Schlock. I'm your host, Herschel Gillis, and today I'm going to be covering the final of your Gavut uh major films. And that would be Shrum. And of course, as I'm going through these, showing off a little bit of my collection. Um, might show my uh, signed photo at the end. I've shown it a couple of times already, but... This is the Uneasy Archive, uh, number 50 of 50, I believe, VHS, uh, pretty rare. Um, I've got a Blu-ray from, um, Cult Epics, as well as the Arrow video release. But, anyway, what is Shram about? Well, Shram is a, uh, film about a serial killer and sort of his vision on life as we are shown his life and daily occurrences that happen to him prior to a traumatic event that happens to him in the beginning of the film. And we see um, a few of his murders, as well as a relationship that he builds with a prostitute. Um, and we see he's obviously very damaged and mentally ill. Um... But what makes it interesting is the contrast between the murders and the rest of his life. Um, how everything seems almost normal and the way that he cleans up after some of the things. Like there's blood splatters on his wall so he paints the walls again. And the part where he's painting lasts almost as long as the part where he's killing them. Uh, stuff like that. It's all told very matter of fact. Um, the way that he kills people is very clinical. Or... Not so clinical, it's just not flashy, I mean, the way that it's shot is clinical. Uh, it's very raw, the way that he does it, uh, it's no frills, um, it's obviously a struggle and everything for him, and it's like, it's much more realistic than a lot of other uh, serial killer themed movies. Another one thing that sets us apart is I would almost call this like a dark drama, uh, rather than a horror movie. It has horror elements, but it's definitely more methodical, slow-paced, not boring, but the pace is certainly, it takes its time. Um, we are also shown the movie, not through the eyes of the main character, but like, we see what he sees. So, there's a part where he's driving a car, and as he's driving, like, the car, what he's seeing and, like, envisioning is, like, the car spinning around, running into traffic, it just starts disappearing, going different places, like, his hallucinations. And we see a couple of these hallucinations. There's, like, a part with a monster. Um, there's sort of a nightmarish scene involving a dentist uh, where uh, something rather graphic happens. Uh, there's also another part in the film where he uh, puts a hammer and nails. He hammers some nails into a part of his body that it shouldn't go. And that one's, I would say, is up to interpretation. Whether that scene was real or not, as I, as is a lot of the film. I mean, we see that he's a damaged man. See that he hallucinates a lot of what's going on in his life. Um, just a lot left to interpretation to the viewer. And then after around just over an hour, it sort of ends. And we're kind of left sitting there wondering what we just saw. Now... This is definitely your Good Wright's most serious work, I would say, other than Der Toad's King. Uh, there's not really much humor or anything in this at all. It's, just, it's very dark and gruesome. Um, no uplifting parts, there's nothing funny about it. And I think that really shows, uh, it's a testament to how good uh, your Good Wright is as a filmmaker, that he made four movies that have distinctly different tones. Um... And he pulled them off really well. Even Necromantic 2, which is my least favorite Boot to Riot movie. Even that film had really high points, and it's one that I return to quite a bit. So, uh, just a testament to that. Uh, it's also a testament to Jurg Boot Wright's ability to make a film on such a low budget. Uh, Shram is obviously shot on a low budget, but... It doesn't feel like it needs a high budget at all. There are some lower budget films that, you know, you can say, 
Bolt's good, but it would have benefited from a bigger budget. This is not one of those. Um, Jurg Bucherite always was someone that worked with what he had available and worked on these low budgets and everything, and this is no exception, but it's like stood by as a, a classic to this day. Um, up there with, I would say, something like Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer or Angst, uh, sort of told in that like more matter-of-fact tone. Nothing's glamorized, nothing's flashy. Uh, it's just, as it says, it's a peek in the mind of this very deranged, damaged man, and uh, how he uses violence as an outlet for some of his thoughts. Um, just, it is, it's, uh, it's an interesting movie. It's not my favorite Yurg Bugarai movie ever. Um, of the four, I would still say that's Stratodskin. But it's also one that I find almost, uh, to be one of the easiest to watch just because it's short, it's straight to the point, um, not a lot of filler. It takes its time, but it's always interesting. And I think it's also a good entry point uh, if you're wanting to watch a movie to get you into your book ride as a whole. It's much more easy to digest than something like Necromantic, even though I love those two films. Um, it's also a little bit... Um, I would say it's less dreary or difficult to watch than something like Dirt Toad's King as well. But it's... Yeah, it's just a really... It's sort of that film that feels like your Bucharest's like peak maturity as a filmmaker, and it's I feel like the one that he wants people to take the most seriously. And it's just a, it's really good. It's highly recommended, just like the rest of your Bucharest's work. I believe Shrum was actually the first your Bucharest movie I watched personally, and after watching it, it got me into the other three films and the shorts. So. Yeah, if you want to start out with, like, that, I became a huge fan. Um, and I would say it all started with this, so definitely start with this as well. Um, I know this isn't the Cold Epics release, but the Cold Epics release is really good as well. Um, highly recommend picking all of those up from them. And, yeah. Um, this one is also, I believe, on Tubi TV, if it's still up there, if I believe so. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well if you just want to click on that and watch it really quick. Uh, and if you've seen this, this let me know your thoughts. I really enjoy it. I know some people find it a little boring. Um, I'm definitely not one of those people. I've also seen this on a list of like the most disturbing movies. And I just don't think it's that. It's definitely more of a dark drama. So, yeah. That sort of wraps up the uh, films of your book, right? Uh, biggest takeaway from these is that I really love these films. I will recommend all four of them. Um, well worth the watch, worth the analysis for all of them. And he really, Jörg Bugrai really made a film for like every occasion and for every type of person. So even if you don't like one, watch the rest just to see. You're, you're sure to find something. I think every one of these films has something to offer as well. Um, not just in the confines of like extreme cinema, but as cinema as a whole. And art as a whole, so, yeah, definitely check them out, um, but yeah, that's it for, uh, today, just a quick little review there, um, I'm gonna be posting a new Shark Saturday this weekend of Toxic Shark, so make sure to keep your notifications on, um, make sure to subscribe if you haven't, thanks for watching to everybody who watches these still, I appreciate all of you, uh, the new mixtape is coming out soon as well, if you're following me on Instagram and you're keeping track of that. So, lots of stuff coming on the pipeline. And, as always, I'm your host, Herschel Gillis, signing off for today. Zero thoughts, zero planning, zero editing. Thanks, guys.